Hi everyone. Today we're going to be talking about something called completing the squared. Now, when you solve a quadratic through completing the square, just like the quadratic formula, this technique will work every single time. Now, most people end up not using this type of way to solve because they prefer either factoring the quadratic formula, but sometimes in order to rewrite an equation in a certain way, you will have to complete the square. So sometimes you have to complete the square, not always to solve a quadratic, but sometimes it's helpful to use to rewrite your quadratic equation or other types of equations in a different format, which we'll get into that much later on. Um, but before I can even teach you how to solve by completing the square, we need to practice some techniques to help us learn, well, how do you solve by completing the square and what are the strategies you use to solve? Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna teach you is something called solving through perfect squares and using the square root property. Now, okay, a perfect square, don't forget, that is a number that you can take the square root of. Okay, and what we have here in both of these is something called a perfect square trinomial, which what that means is after we factor, you will be able to rewrite this as a perfect square, which I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. Okay, and then after that, we're gonna solve using the square root property, which I've already actually taught you how to do that before. All the square root property is, is to solve when you have to take the square root of both sides of your equation. Now, the last time we solved by um, using the square root property, you just simply started solving for x. Now, you can only just start solving for x if you only have the quadratic term and the constant term. If you ever have the linear term, which is when x is to the first power, you cannot just solve for x. We're gonna have to factor first and then we can solve. Okay, so you can't just start solving for x since we have the linear term in both of these. We're going to have to factor first. Now, typically you would never solve an equation in the way I'm gonna show you in these two examples, okay? Really, you guys, all I'm doing right now is helping you to build some skills so that when you complete the square, you are more familiar with what to do. Okay, so this is kind of showing you some steps that you're going to be seeing later on when you solve by completing the square. Okay, normally what we're going to, what you do is you make one side of your equation equal to zero because you're solving for the zeros, roots, x-intercepts, solutions, remember they mean all the same thing. Okay, and then you'd solve by either factoring or now you know a new technique, um, which is the quadratic formula. Okay, but in these problems, we're actually not going to make this side zero because right now I'm just trying to show you some techniques for what you're about to do later on. So I know you're probably like, well, why are we doing this if you never solve equations this way? Well, again, it's to help you for what is to come. So when you solve by completing the square, you guys will be thanking me that I taught you how to do this. But just know you normally don't solve equations like this. So just keep that in mind. You're just practicing some key steps for when we complete the square. Okay, well, let's get started on example one. Which, guess what? My cat has joined us again today. She's kind of blocking the camera. And my camera is frozen again. Here we go. Can you see? Ah, stop freezing camera. Okay, we're back. Yep, my cat is back. Hey, Babette. She's ready to start solving, so let's get going. I might have to push her off, though, because she's currently blocking the problem. All right, let's see. All right, Babette. I'm going to have to move her. Sorry, you guys. Okay. All right, well, let's start solving. Okay, so what we're going to do, you guys, again, normally when you solve a quadratic, you have to make one side equal to zero, and then you can solve by either factoring and setting your factors equal to zero, or by using the quadratic formula. Today, though, just know we're just practicing some key steps. So this is not what you normally would do to solve for x, but we are going to solve for x, okay? But anyways, just bear with me. This will help you for later on our pinky promise, which is the most serious promise. So, okay, well, let's get started. So what we're going to do, you guys, what we're going to do is we are not going to make this side zero. We are going to be factoring this side. 
Okay, which since I have three terms in a quadratic, that means the factoring technique that we're gonna use is general factoring, which remember, I teach it to you through slide and divide. So I'm gonna show you slide and divide. Again, if you hate sliding and dividing and you prefer a different way to factor, then you can do that way. Otherwise, let's get going. So I need to identify the A, B, and C, which my A is four, my B is also four, and my C is one. Okay, well let's start sliding and dividing. So I'm gonna slide A to C or multiply. So four times one is four. Don't forget it is slide and divide. So I slide the four over and later on I'm gonna be dividing by four. So just be careful. Okay, and then my B term is also four. So I need two of the same numbers that will multiply to be four and add to be four. Okay, so let's come up with some numbers that multiply to be four and let's see which one of those will add to be four. Guys, and remember when we're multiplying to equal a positive number, a positive times a positive equals a positive or a negative times a negative equals a positive. I'm trying to add to get positive four though so that means both of these need to be positive. So I know I'm looking for two positive numbers. Okay, well the first thing that multiplies to be four that I can think of is one and four. Okay, let's see if that works. So one plus four, oh, that's five. Shucks, that doesn't work. So let's see, what else multiplies to equal four? I'm having a hard time with this one. Hmm, that's true, you guys. That's a good point. Two and two would also work. Let's see. 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 plus 2 equals 4. Look at that. We found our answer. Okay, so 2 times 2 equals 4, and 2 plus 2 equals 4. Equals 4. Sorry. So now I'm going to bring on down these numbers. Bring them on down. So it's a positive 2, so I'm going to say plus 2. And it's a positive 2, so again, I'm going to say plus 2. Okay, and now I know that my fraction, two-fourths, will simplify down to be one-half. Okay, so um, I'm going to do this off to the side because I forgot to leave space for this. The demon cats got me. But anyways, what you're supposed to do is simplify this down. So technically, what I'm about to write is the next step. Okay, so make sure you write what I'm about to write, like right underneath it. Okay, so right underneath, I guess I could squeeze it in. Let's see. I think I can. Okay, so 2 over 4 will simplify down to be, well, 2 will divide into both of these. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So this will simplify down to be 1 half. And this is also 2 over 4, which simplifies down to be 1 half. Okay, so again, you guys, this should be your next step. I know I'm kind of squeezing it in, so just be careful. Okay. So now, don't forget you guys, you do not need to leave fractions in factored form. So where do you move this number in the denominator when you have a fraction in factored form? Well, I'm going to move the 2 in front of the x. Okay, so my next step would be 2x, and I'm going to leave 1 there. So 2x plus 1, and then 2x plus 1. Okay, which I know you guys is kind of messy because I had to squeeze in a step. Okay, but if you guys see here, we ended up with 2x plus 1 and 2x plus 1. I ended up with the same thing twice. So guess what, you guys? That means I have a perfect square. Like if I had 3 times 3, that would be 9, and 9 is a perfect square. This time I have 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1, which since I have two of these, I can re rewrite it as one time with the square, because anything that multiplies to itself means you are squaring it. Okay, so that is why this right here is called a perfect square trinomial, because eventually I was able to write it as a binomial square, which this is a binomial because you have two terms. Okay, so anytime you have a perfect square trinomial, you should always end up with a binomial squared. 
Okay, and guess what, you guys? Since I now have a squared in my problem, I can solve using the square root property because guess what? The opposite of a square is a square root. And if you guys notice, each time I brought down my 49, so now I can solve. Okay, so let's solve this thing for x, you guys. So I'm going to undo the square by square rooting both sides of my equation. I'm going to square root that thing. Okay, which the square root and the squared will cancel out. So I'm left with 2x plus 1 equals, now don't forget, when you square root both sides of an equation, what will appear on this side? Holy hot dog, you guys, that would be a plus or minus. Okay, and then the square root of 49 is 7. Okay, so now I need to keep solving for x, which it makes it a little bit more challenging because I have this plus or minus 7. Okay, just kind of think of the plus or minus being with the 7. Okay, so they will uh, this will always be in front of the 7. Okay, well, I'm going to keep solving up here because I'm kind of running out of space. Okay, so, sorry guys, I just dropped one of my markers and I don't know where it went. Ah. Oh, well, I'll be down a marker for a little bit. Oh, there it is. Okay, I found it. Sorry, you guys. Okay, let's keep solving before Miss Long does something else silly. Okay, so anyways, I'm going to solve for x like you normally would. Okay, just keep in mind this plus or minus is going to stay with the 7. Okay, and I'm going to keep this separate from everything else for right now. Okay, so I'm going to solve for x like I normally would. Okay, so the way I'm going to move my positive 1 to the other side is by subtracting it on both sides. Okay, so I'm going to have, let's see here, I'm going to subtract it, which 1 minus 1 will cancel and turn to 0. Okay, and I'm going to subtract 1 on this side. Now, I'm not going to combine my 1 and 7 right now. I'm going to rewrite it like this. So I'm going to have 2x equals now. Typically, you guys, the plus or minus we're going to keep as the second term. It's not wrong to write plus or minus first and then put the negative one. I'm just telling you that most mathematicians put the plus or minus second. So this would be negative one plus or minus seven, like that. Okay, we'll deal with the plus or minus later on. For now, we're just gonna leave it with the seven. Okay, and then lastly, to solve for x, the two and the x are secretly multiplying. So the way that you bring two over is by dividing that thing on both sides. Okay, so then we're left with x equals negative 1 plus or minus 7 all over 2. And if you guys notice, it kind of looks like when we were solving with the quadratic formula a little bit. Okay, so one time I'm going to have x equals negative 1 plus 7 over 2. And then another time I'm going to have x equals negative 1 minus the 7. So one time we do the positive, one time we do the negative. So negative 1 minus 7 over 2. And be careful, you guys, the only number that changes signs is the 7 because it has a positive and negative with it. Okay, let's see what happens. So negative 1 plus 7 is 6. Okay, and 6 over 2 is 3. So x could be 3 or, let's see, negative 1 minus 7 more is negative 8. And negative 8 over 2 is negative 4. So look at that. So guys, again, we use perfect square trinomials to help us find the zeros, roots, x-intercept solutions. Remember, they mean all the same thing. For the quadratic. And again, normally we don't solve like this. Normally we don't keep that side as anything but zero. But again, these steps are preparing you for when we actually solve by completing the square. So there you go. We're practicing for what lies ahead. Nice job, you guys.